All right, let's go ahead and get started with the Lenet 5 network. This Lenet 5 network came in 1998. It was originally used for handwritten digit recognition. The major difference between nowadays and uh, the time when this Lenet was proposed, the major difference is use of ReLU network and obviously the use of you use your batch normalization and dropout. At that time, this ReLU batch normalization dropout and the max pooling was also being done as the average max pooling or the average pooling actually. So it was a very simple network. This Lenet 5 was really very simple network. It has convolutional layer, then it has average pooling layer, another convolution, then average pooling, convolution, and then fully connected layer. So as I told you that at that time, the people were using average pooling networks only. The max pooling network were not available at that time. And uh, ReLU activation function was also not available that time. So the ReLU was not being used at that time. The most famous activation function at that time was the TANH activation function. Later on, the people realized that the ReLU function works much more better than the TANH. And the nowadays, this ReLU activation function has become as the de facto default activation function for any of your architecture. These algorithms was used in recognizing the signatures in the bank checks. For example, if someone signs A like this and A something like this and people also used to write this A. So you see this and these, these two things are the different. Manual check of these, uh, the process were uh, kind of the time consuming at uh, those times. So these networks were made. Uh, this is the architecture. It starts with the input, a 32 by 32 input. You can see it here as well. Thereafter, this move to the convolutional layer. There are the six filters. So these are the filters and uh, the six different type of the filters were applied on this. So, so these six different type of the filter with the five cross five size, which we see it here, it's defined there. So the size of these filters, you can see it as the five cross five and the total of filters were the six filters. So the number of their, these six feature maps, you can also say there. So these six feature maps, again, based on these six filters, then, the, then average pooling is applied here. At that time, this average pooling is, uh, wa was called as the subsampling. So this subsampling is done again so that the dimension of input image or these uh, convolutional features can be reduced in half there. So the average pooling was applied and the average pooling size was the 2 cross 2. So basically you can see that it was the 2 cross 2 average pooling and the stride size, stride size was the 2. That means once 2 by 2 is done, then it will move to the another another subspace and so on. There was no overlapping uh, average pooling there. So by doing this, this the this height and width can become, uh, if this, let's say this is x, then this is y, then this can be simply like x by 2 and then y by 2. So that is what here happening here. After applying these the filters, now this becomes 28 cross 28. The size of this becomes 28 cross 28. After the subsampling, that's when after the average pooling, this 28 becomes 14 cross 14. So this becomes a 14 cross 14 here. Thereafter, again, a convolutional layer is applied here with the filter size of 5 cross 5. There are total 16 filters are applied here. If you count these, so it's a total 16 filters with the 16 filters with the kernel size of the 5 by 5. Now this becomes, this produces an output of 10 by 10. How does this produces? This is 14, all right? So the 14, it, it becomes like you have here the height and width like X and Y. So it becomes like, let's say if X equal to Y, all right? So in our case, we have here 14 cross 14, X and Y. And the filter size is five we have. 
So it becomes like we have 14 minus 5 and then plus 1. So in this case it becomes here 10. So that is why we are getting here 10 cross 10 image there. The total number of filters what we see from here to here that's the feature map which is 16. Thereafter again a subsampling with the 2 by 2 and the stride size of 2 is applied. Then this 10 becomes here 5 cross 5 here. Alright, so after this, once you have got here these 5 cross 5. Alright, just a second. So you have got here 5 cross 5. Alright, so these things are 5 cross 5. Thereafter, again, another convolutional layer is applied there with the 120, uh, the feature maps. And at that time, the kernel size was 5 by 5 there. Alright, so what happened here? Once your image size is already 5 there, 5 cross 5. So another kernel was applied with the size of 5 itself. And there were total 120 kernels were applied. So these kernels were producing here the result of only one value. And there were 120 uh, the filter. So it becomes there a volume where it becomes 1 by 1 and 120 there. So this whole thing actually what you see there in this convolutional layer, this is a little confusing, but at that time it was, uh, I mean, a general standard that the people used to use like 5 cross 5 and the 7 cross 7, the filter size. So you use a 5 cross 5 filter size on 5 cross 5, uh, on 5 cross 5 input then you will be getting here with only one uh, only one value so the size will be obviously one by one and there were 120 filters so you will be getting here 120 there so these networks were very small network at that time the computational power was not that strong so 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 these networks these, these networks were very light network after this convolutional layer, this 120 convolutional, uh, you know, the cells are there, total 120. Then a fully connected layers layer uh, 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 is applied here. And the size of this fully connected layer was just the 84 cell. So the total number of parameters you can see between these were 120 multiplied by the 84 there. And obviously the number of the bias here with the 84 as well. So 120 multiplied by 84 plus number of bias which is 84 there. And thereafter at the final stage this was uh, uh, designed here with the 10 output for the digit recognition. As of now if we see this. So for digit recognition the 10 output was made there. And... Uh, these 10 output used to detect the digits which was written with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 till 9 digits. So that's how this lay network and uh, it was developed in 1998. Thereafter it took almost the 15 years to come up with the another, another uh, uh, the deep learning neural network which was like a game changer in a deep learning field. We will be seeing that we will be seeing that network LXNet in the next lesson. Alright, I'll see you then.